Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill, and I am your host. Uh, joining me today for episode 93 is a uh, film director and founder of Tree Motion Studios, yeah, very good. Paul and James Houghton. Thank you. Hello. 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 It's good to be here. Yes, let's remember to talk. All about. right. Here we go. I feel like I've got a shield in front of me. But it's all good. Oh, no. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so welcome back. I mean, like this is ninety three. Last time we had you on eighteen. Eighteen. So it's been a bit. I'm thrilled to be back. I mean, that was a a long time ago. Now we were what doing from under the bridge together. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I don't know what stage we're in. It hadn't been released yet. Yeah, the the film was still in post production. We're right. talking about like your your social media pushes and all that yeah, kind of space. Right, right, right. But just to throw out a loaded question to start, uh, <laughs> what have you been up to since then? <laughs> it, it's well, it's chaos. <laughs> There's lots going on. We're in post on Once Upon a Riot, um, which you were actually on for the airport shoot which was great. Thanks for joining us again. Yeah, script supervisor. Yeah, and fantastic one. I'm glad you could be part of it. So that was a film, as you know, that um, shot both in the UK and in the US. We actually have our um, co-producers here from the UK staying with us right now, um, Ella Greenwood and um, Maya Bartley O'Day. Um, and they were fantastic. So it was, a, it was an interesting experience because international film, trying to figure out how to finance films in both countries, learning some regulations and rules along the way. Like there's a different uh, requirement for length of days and hour lunch, mm. which then uh, when you're looking at a seven or eight day shoot and you take out an hour a day plus, you know, you're basically losing a day. So that was interesting. And then financially doing it. But we had great, um, in Broken Flames, um, a great, co-producing company that really helps sort that out so expensive project filming abroad <laughs> yeah i mean there's lots to ask about this project for yeah, sure because sure. i know there's i don't know there's there's a lot okay so that's one thing we'll, we'll, that's one let, thing yeah, yeah well, you want to go through all the things let's, let's lay out right. let's lay out the what, what we're going to jump into and then we can right peace we can we can dive deeper on all, all this stuff so you also know that i'm doing uh, as a writer and creative developer i guess you could say now that I'm doing a couple of projects for a big studio uh, here in Los Angeles, um, which is a little complicated right now, of course, because well, there's currently as as we're filming, we're, what month are we? we're in? And the late May, 2023, yeah. Yeah. the the WGA Writers Guild of America are on strike. That's right. That's yeah. right. So we want to so so in order to support that the right way, um, I'm pausing writing on. Those projects. So there's two projects there. One called Criminal Spirit, which has been going on for for a while now. But that's um, that's a cool story. Uh, started as a feature film, went into to talk to WB about that as a feature film, and then because of the depth of the story and all the layers um, between us all, I guess we determined it it might be better as a TV series. So now it's under sort of the Warner Media umbrella. Um, there's that one, but then there's a new one that we're working on right now called Cast and Crew, which is really, really fun one. Um, and we can talk about that later. My daughter, who's nine, London, she, she said, well, she's been on set with us in the UK and she, um, she's really into this industry and she wanted to write a screenplay. So she wrote a screenplay. Um, which I, I, to be honest, I wasn't sure that she was going to do, you know, she's nine, right? But she sat down one, and I told her if she wrote the screenplay, then we would make it professionally for her. I think we've been in contact with you about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is cool. So, um, and she did it. So we had to follow through. So now we're literally going into filming on that um, in a week. My goodness. <laughs> My God. Uh, we've got some. We've got a great uh, group of people on that as well. She went in and did the casting. We'll talk about more about that. I guess that's yeah, cool. yeah, it's exciting. It is. It really is great to see your daughter like follow, sort of wanting to without pushing, to sort of naturally follow in some footsteps there. So that's called Breaking Plans. It's a cool story. We've got the support of the community as well, which is really great, including the elementary school. So we're filming there. Um, then the week after that, we're we're filming. I'm directing Luke Clopton. 
um, who wrote his first short. Um, it's called D-List, um, which is really great. So we're getting that prepared right now. So I'll be the third time directing Luke. Yeah, because Luke is uh, was one of your leads in yeah. uh, under the from under the bridge, That's right. and also played once, in Once Upon a Riot. Once yeah. Upon a Riot. So it's nice to have recurring cast and recurring collaborators come. And it really is, and and Luke Luke has he's super talented, and I didn't. I mean, I knew that he was a talented actor, but I didn't know the range he had. And at the birdies, it's all good. I don't know. They're, they're not. They're not picking. Uh, it's a little nest you, up there. Sort of, you know. Oh yeah, we're currently also. This is we're <laughs> we're on look. I'm on location in your space right now. We're outdoors. For those that are not watching the yeah. the video form, so you may hear some uh, hear some stuff. But yeah, it's it's, it's a lovely day. Lovely it is day. a lovely day in Seal Beach. Yeah. Okay, so Luke. Yeah. So Luke, super talented guy, and um, I actually didn't when he we did auditions for Once Upon a Riot. There's one American role, um, basically uh, in the story. He goes over to England with his English buddy. But I didn't know if he was going to have the range to pull off the humor that was in that role. And um, so we auditioned over two days in L.A. Um, we had like 40 or 50, I think it was close to 50 actors come in, all fabulous. Um, then Luke came in, and he was opposite um, a, a, an actor called Tristan Neal, who's actually playing against him in his next film, which is flying out from New York, which is amazing to be part of it. So they were, um, the way that we audition, you know, that we have, we, we bring actors in together so they can actually act it out and we film it. Because we think that gets the best out of it. You've got body language in there. And, um, and Luke nailed it. He, he was incredibly funny. He totally got the role. I think he had some, um, he went to his acting coach, um, Amy Linden, and got some help there. And she's amazing. So yeah, so that was the second time. And then this will be the third time. So there's that. We also just did a reality pilot um, with um, a veterinarian place called Nen Equine. It's like being on set. It's all good. It's all good. We don't, <laughs> like we, we don't set, have right? to hold for sound. Well, like here. Jose would be telling us to like hold. <laughs> um, so yes, we did a reality TV pilot, which is amazing. There's this. Um, it's an all female um, except for um, the husband's uh, veterinarian team. Um, that have a mobile service. They have two trucks, and they go out and tend to animals and of all types. We saw like um, horses, alpacas, um, which I kept calling llamas, and earned Gavin Murray, the DP, a hundred dollars because I said I would stop saying it. Oh no! Yeah, he's a hundred dollars richer. Um, goats. It was just fantastic, and they're developing this um, animal hospital. So that looks good. I think we. It looks like we may have a shopping agreement on that one, so that's great. And then, yeah, it's just it's a lot. Okay, so to recontextualize who you are for people a little bit, yeah. based off of our, because our last episode ran a little over three hours, I'm sure. So you can go back Sorry. and listen to that. Feel free. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all good. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, but the little bit of your story is like you wanted to pursue filmmaking film filmmaking writing in in your youth your more your your younger days let's yeah. just say not that you're old now okay i'm just Thanks, saying man. just saying <laughs> when you were younger your initial you you had wrote some stuff some yeah, stuff got yeah. picked up yeah and then you put your kind of creative life on hold and now you're coming back into that form and you're feeling like you have to kind of play catch up a bit and you're and and uh, launching like Dream Motion Studios and and going full throttle after essentially like from under the bridge mm. felt like you're kind of your coming out party. Yeah, I'm like, hey guys, I'm back. We're going we're going full here. Uh, so hence like all the projects that we're hearing about now. This is yeah. This is the catch up game, and I know the big one is Once Upon a Riot. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, we can um yeah we can go moment to moment here, but that's I just want to catch people up that that's that's right. Yeah. So I sold a screenplay in 2006, but then um, was going into a, a relationship at that point. And um, based on the details of that relationship and where that person was at in their career, they were going into med school, basically. And um, I sort of had to make a decision at that point. So I sold a screenplay to Warner Brothers, um, which was a fabulous experience. And 
continued on in my job in design. So um, I resigned as a vice president of design at um, Karma Automotive, which was Fisker Automotive, um, Henrik Fisker, Barney Kohler, um, co-founders of uh, the original company. And um, I actually got invited to, to work with Henrik again while I was um, making From Under the Bridge. Um, and it would have been great, but um, now we're in film. So, yeah, that's that's basically the, the transition. So in, in um, 2019 time um, was when I dedicated my time, fully resigned from the design industry and committed to, to film. And it's it's been great. Okay. Right. Yeah, because I know I definitely want to talk about like what your what your quote unquote strategy has right. been and how right. how it's all been going down because it feels like you've been busy and like I know even setting up for this podcast was different from the last time we did it because <laughs> I'm like I'm getting a text from like a producer from Dream Motion Studios yeah. like hey can we clarify details I'm like well, this isn't normal like we didn't right. do this last so it's kind of cool being like oh there's like there's your it's just cool. But, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, I love that, and and not that you you can always text me directly. It's been so busy. It's so it's no, like I lots get of it. People handling it. I get know? it. No, I wasn't offended. I'm just yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness. yeah, I thought it was cool. I'm like, all right, yeah, I, I don't want to hmm. get little details like that. Like, can we clarify that? No, was, it's great. I mean, it's yeah. a good point because that was Bailey, and she was an intern for us last year. We flew her over to England. She had um, a great experience. She's fabulous and now is, she's just uh, graduated from chapman for a mfa which is incredible and so she was the first of um of that side of things like bring it like get like uh, giving people opportunities right which we were able to do and consistently do that and we're actually flying we have um a young lady who worked on once upon a riot in the uk called lara we're flying out this week for her summer internship she goes to Bournemouth University in the UK, so now we've got an international intern. That's very cool. It is right. Nice. So, um, so that's really cool to be able to do that and like have span the world with with giving people creative opportunities and and of course like like my daughter as well, same sort of thing. You know? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot there. There where, is a lot. Where do I want to go? There is a lot. Um, <clears throat> okay. I don't. Know. I feel like sticking with that. Let's talk, let's talk about you because you're right. What you meant, you wanna, okay, you, go for you it. touched on like catch up, sure. So it does play on my mind, right? Okay. So yeah. like, I started when you look at people like, um, that I admire, like Quentin Tarantino, Edgar Wright, they've been doing it from way back. They started learning about film by making films, and Edgar Wright did a TV show with Simon Pickle Spaced, which was phenomenal. And you wonder, like, so what's the development curve? Right, and I really do believe. I believe that that that's. I'm not to. I don't want to, this to sound conceited, but I think that the vision and I know the writing ability is already there. That was proven from the from the screenplay sale. It's like what happens with the directing and the producing films, right? Where are you with that? And I think from Under the Bridge was a good test. I like. I think we talked about. It. I didn't know. I didn't mean to do it. It was like COVID came, and then I was slowed down on the professional work that then I was doing with the studio, with um, WB. And then it's just like, well, I guess I'll try it. Why not? And then now it's just like, I feel like I have a right to, to be doing it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, you feel like, okay. I feel like, I don't I know, the imposter, sy the imposter syndrome yeah, right, is being right. a little pushed down. You're like, oh no, I think I do know what I'm doing and yeah. and I belong here. You're So that's where, you, so you're you're feeling more in your zone with that right I now? I feel confident in it, yeah. Yeah. I feel, and, and knowing we have, um, we're editing Once Upon a Riot right now with Phil McLaughlin, who's, out, he's a um, editor on The Walking Dead um, and just directed the first episode. I don't know if I can say that. It will be out later. But so he's a sensational guy. And um, we're in that now. And I can see it definitely looks good. I mean, you were here for, for a clip actually recently. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see what, hear what you have to say face to face. About what? The clip that you saw from Once Upon a Riot. Um, it feels like, because you, you put clips online sometimes too. So it feels yeah, like. Yeah, not so much this time, right? Yeah. This I, was a tricky, this was a, like a viewing 
party with one of our actors here from the UK, so it was it was quite. Un- I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening in my head while we're watching the clip. It's not even You're right, because um, of course we're talking about like a social gathering you kind of threw together last minute. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> right. me and my girlfriend Sarah came by, so I'm thinking about like making sure she's having a good time meeting meeting all these new faces and stuff. I'm like, sure. I know some of these people, and right, and I want her want her to meet you and all that kind of stuff. So when the clip is playing, we we have, you have, uh, I don't know the the actor what, Josh Josh Joshua Lewis. Yeah, he's getting all getting all playing shy about about you know <laughs> all these people are here watching this like rough right. cut <laughs> right. of this stuff. So when I'm watching it, you know, I just want to be supportive and 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 feel good about like all right, yeah, the, you know, I don't. This isn't like a final edit piece. I that's don't, right. No, yeah. that's right. Yeah, far from it. It's a rough so, cut for sure. Yeah, it was fun watching. We showed, I think, two clips that day. Yeah, I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you got coerced yeah, by the exactly. by the mob <laughs> to play a second clip. Was uh was the first was it the chase scene the first one? I think that was the second one. At the one. airport, okay. I thought the first one was just like the first argument. First one with Josh, yeah, Josh is in the in the warehouse, yeah. and then um, yeah, the second one was with Luke, I think, getting chased at the oh, airport. Okay, that was the one you snuck, which one, which is one that I was a part of. But I know on the first scene, my main takeaway was like, you can. Based off even just the audition tapes you're kind of putting yeah. up, it felt very consistent with taking that kernel and following through with like on the oh, day. I love, that. I love that feedback. That's really, yeah. Yeah. So I was right like, on. I'm like, this feels just like the stuff you were test shooting during yeah. that process. So I'm like, all right, this this is consistent with that. And it was interesting to watch the, because uh, I don't know how you gave the specific directions but i know they get up like really in each other's faces yeah yeah yeah. and i'm like that feels i don't know if that was directed or if that was like a a thing that they decided on their own but i feel like that's like a unique touch that you gave to it yeah yeah and that's what i was watching there it's like nice was yeah it was it was part of this it was i mean that was part of the rehearsal i mean the auditions and rehearsals yeah. as well was to you know it's a true story you know, between like this is a, a community gangster and and um, buying cars from car thieves and and kind of this car thief's kind of trapped in a scenario and he's not getting the situation that's just happened. So yeah, there was definitely it was definitely written into the script and directed, but um, they added some things which is which was funny because you know, in from under the bridge, we got known from getting Luke slapped a few times. Right. What do you and mean you, you got known? <laughs> <laughs> because Chris Simperman and Luke had this moment, and then we had like, we had to the point where Luke was getting a little bit sore on the cheek. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then lo and behold, here we are again in Once Upon a Riot, and it's not written in there to, to, to give a couple of slaps, but mm. Kean decided. Um, and the, the, it wasn't like a. It was a mutually agreed thing. It wasn't like Joshua was like, I don't want to be here. But all the slaps started coming again, and you will see it in in the film. Um, so it's just funny. It's like the things You're like, people. okay, yeah, I guess I'm this gonna, is what I do now. <laughs> I guess, so, yeah, I've got, I've got like slapping people in films. It's going to be the thing, you know? Yeah, um, but it was fun to see the that level of, of that specific flavor of drama that you were kind of going for there. It feels, it felt like a little elevated with how close they were getting and how intense they were getting. Yeah. And it felt, you know, there's a, yeah, just that there's a lot of dialogue. So it was, uh, it was just cool to see that dance. But, uh, I enjoyed it. I yeah, no, it's right. And I, that's a good point because these scenes are quite long between the actors and, um, and even in auditions, they were like seven minute auditions, you know, so they were doing like whole scenes because we really want to get the feel as well. It also helps us when we do that to understand if the dialogue's working between all the different characters. I think one of the hardest things to do as a writer is writing individual um, personas through dialogue. Like we're one person and then we're trying to authentically give each character a voice, an independent voice. And some of it you want the the actor to bring on. Like the the, the character that I that I wrote originally for the gangster wasn't Irish. And Keon came in and just nailed the part. So then it's just like 
we, then you just talk to the actor and like, what would you actually say here? What's realistic? Does this feel realistic? You do rehearsals, and then all of a sudden that character, as it was written one way, then becomes this new version of it, yeah. this Irish version of it, which I thought was really great. So I think that's one of the hardest parts. But yeah, so um, we get to test that during the auditions to see how the characters are bre living and breathing and to also get a feel of what the film's going to be as well. So we like doing that, that kind of process. Okay. Hmm. We, can, we can talk more about the audition process. Or I know your initial topic that you brought up was the directorial pursuit. I don't know if there's anything else there that you were looking um, to. Like you said that you feel you're feeling more confident. You're feeling like you belong and you've, yeah. you've, you've reached this new point. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I guess. <sighs> it's about a portfolio, right? So <laughs> and it, you need to build a body of work. And it's like you are somewhat judged on that body of work or even how many pieces have you done. Right. So now it's sort of a race to get a collective in place, even though the opportunities are there through the through the studio, through um, on the professional level. And that's being noticed there, definitely being noticed there, which is great. So it's being validated by others, which are, which is great, including, you know, the studio. Um, it's like I'm too impatient. Right. It's like. You're at a point in your life, I didn't start uh, doing this um, at 20, although I was in you know, performing arts in school. It's like, now I have to, what do I want that, those, you know, this this um, career to be in the shortened amount of time, probably, you know? Not that it has to end at any point. Yeah. Until you die, okay. Then you pretty much, then you <laughs> pretty much have to you, end you gotta it. Gotta call it there. You gotta think. call it there. I think. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I would say, all right, for me to get proper to properly ask these questions, I feel like we have to rewind the clock a little bit to how to get something made. Mm. Um, so coming off of the tale of uh, from under the bridge. Um, and having that successful film festival run, yeah, I'll call it. Yeah, it was you. it was a lovely run. Yeah, still lovely. still running. <laughs> I because you just posted about a it, recent I one. I know it's yeah. crazy. We're we we've been invited to um uh, to another festival that's happening there where there's some actually there's some people from HBO and um Marvel and then this new media film festival we've been fortunate to be included in and um. Seal Beach one is coming up as well. So, like, I keep wanting to close it. <laughs> but we do have to... The Seal Beach one wasn't around when we first released the film. And Seal Beach is where we live. And it was where it was filmed. So, that yeah, will be the end. Yeah, That's the, this September. The film was uh, highlighted in, like, the Seal Beach newspaper, right? Wasn't yeah, that's that right. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely so was. It's the home. So, it might yeah. As, yeah, it might, it's, it's, it's a nice... For the community. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so getting something made. Yeah. And again, having that chip on your shoulder of like, I need to get that portfolio built and get your experience up. And and I don't know if I'm uh, I'm allowed to say. Are, can we talk about you having director? <laughs> like you have director lined up for, uh, for your uh, WB thing. Can I say that? For, for which thing? Like you said, some of the episodes you're allowed to, you're signed on to direct some of the episodes for the series that you're writing? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. All sure. right, so I, w I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> 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 it in post, are you just going to blank that part? Or like... <laughs> I don't know, I might just live there. Airspace. That's um, when everybody, everyone's now going to shut off on there, you know? <laughs> Let's stop. All right. Okay, so you... Like you mentioned the WB, and yeah. you're writing a series yeah. uh, that was initially pitched as a feature. Right. In, Criminal in, Spirit. And that... In that contract, there's uh, I don't know what we call like obligations or or you're signed on to yeah all concessions. I'll just say whatever. to to direct well like two of the episodes or an episode or something like that. Yeah. So I don't know the specific timeline, but is there any part of like making all this stuff, making going through Dream Motion Studios, and making mm. additional work? Yeah. Is that so that way you're showing up to the 
the main big gig with like you actually know what you're doing you're not learning on that job like you have other jobs that you're kind of this is great yeah yeah is that is that the strategy or is it i know there's multiple things up in the air we juggle all this stuff yeah, but all, all how, stuff. how are you what's how are you thinking about it what's the so it's great this is great so dream motion studio is it's a it's a company that does a lot um you know including you know putting out independent films together obviously it's behind um once upon a riot and we're doing um luke's film through that and we did this tv pilot and we also do like you know corporate jobs as well it's like you know to to continue to gain um quality products for ourselves and for other people right and during that it's not like you keep it's not that you're trying to learn anything cause we 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 execute well i believe this is about keep keeping you know keeping it going keeping doing and doing mm -hmm. so dream motion studios is is a company within itself to support the independent ideas that maybe you're not going to be able to you know to create something that's there to be viewed by whoever and it could be that the studios who are doing it with once upon a riot now so that's in front of three major studios now um as this longer than normal proof of concept it'll be like 50 minutes and it's in it's it, but without making it five, five zero it. 50. five zero yeah five zero about that and without making that you couldn't have something to put in front of these people although ultimately so what is it it's like you know some i, I like tarantino's statement about that he didn't go to film school, he went to film, right? I love that. So I think the best way to learn about elevating it within film is to go out and try things and like keep doing it, right? And aiming for a quality result and knowing what you need in place to make something quality. Like obviously the actors have to be sensational, the writing's gotta be on point. Um, the vision, framing, sound, all of this stuff has to be perfect. And well, and then like what that. you bring to the table specifically too, right? It's like how you live in that, that center of the ecosystem as the writer, yeah. director. Yeah, which you know about. Yeah, which I know about too. Because mm -hmm. um, I figure that plays into it as well, right? And like you said, the writing on point, the actors have to show up. Yeah. But also that communication funnel kind of comes out of you and the more the more that we do it the better we get at the things that like oh like you learned something on this project yeah. you learned something new on this project so we're always growing and learning and i'm curious to hear about the latest learnings that you've had as well but patience so you know whenever like we're in and i think that we always have to remember that directing means going obviously through the whole post-production process too so um you on this particular project, I wanted Phil to edit the film. And like the the editor helps the film and the director produce the best possible version of that vision, right? If you have a poor editor, I think you could have great footage, but obviously then you don't have a good film, right? And Phil is sensational. Um, we had a, we had a schedule in mind. And then Phil got this great opportunity to go direct, <laughs> you know, and, and um, get his um, his card, his director's card. And you can't, I mean, then you have to, you have to make a decision then. Do you then transfer the editing to somebody else? And I'm like, no, like I, I need to, to, to allow the longer course to take place, the longer path in order to ensure it's still going to be a quality film. And I think with that, you have to look at the end result. Like, what's the what's the mi the end milestone, the end goal? Who are you delivering it to? Um, and then you can make those decisions, right? But that's one of the things on this project. Is like I am going to be sure that it's not going to be released until it's as perfect as it can be, because it's again a, a milestone representation of what I'm doing. Woo! <laughs> Woo! That's scary. That's hard. It is hard because we we all want to see the finish. We're all excited to see 
the end result, right? <clears throat> but the the journey of getting there sometimes takes some um, turns. Yeah, because I know that I could have the tendency to I I pull the plug early. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have the feeling inside that like I just want to be done with this right. and I want to move on to the next right. thing. Or I just want to move on to getting this out. There. Yeah, I want to. It's just like I'm like I'm really happy with this. Like yeah. the the edit came out great. And it's like, but yeah. if we sat with it a little bit longer, we could actually tighten this up and tighten this up and play a little bit more. Like experiment more with the score. There's so many ways that yeah. you can play with this thing. Yeah. And I uh, tend to um, want to pull the plug early, but I like that you're pushing for more of the extended around. It's like, it's not about getting it done. It's about right. doing it right. It's and got to be great. And there are other people that I want to, like, um, there's a colorist, um, Billy Hobson out of Harbor Picture Company, um, who I absolutely, I think he's a great person as well as a, as a spectacular expert in the field. And I met him, like, I met him by chance. It was like, you know, London's friends, parents, best friend. It was like, it was just a crazy meeting. Yeah. But he's like, oh my God, the trust. When you have somebody, it's very hard in, I think, any, any relationship in life. When you found somebody you can trust to make a, an adjustment or change, to, to put them, you know, to one side and go with somebody else. If you've got somebody that you absolutely trust and you know that they're going to be good for you, and especially in for, for your film, then you kind of want to stick with them. And but usually those people are also incredibly busy with lots of projects. And of course, if we're financing them, you know, it's about begging them to spend the hours at the, you know, you know, paying the right way, of course, but still asking them to to put yeah. their hours on your project. <sighs> Okay, so I'll bring it back to getting something made. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I one thing I really want to I'm trying to get to maybe here is cuz I don't think we we talked a little bit about it before. I know prior to cuz Once Upon a Riot is like you said you kind of alluded to it's a proof of concept film yeah. for a larger story yeah. for essentially for a feature film version mm -hmm. of that story. And we spent a lot of money. We spent it's going to be 200,000. You spent a lot of money yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, I don't know, I just want to put it out for the people too on how the decisions you, that you have to make when you're trying to make something is like, yeah. like you said, it's for your career yeah. and what's, what is going to get you to the place that you want to go in the timely manner that you want to get there is like that weird balance. Yeah. So with Once Upon a Riot, you had a decision to make. And I remember you consulted a bunch of people and you came, you even asked me the question too. I've <laughs> but it was like, do you make Once Upon a Riot right. as a short film proof of concept? Or do you take this money that's accessible right now and just make the feature film? Right. And you made the decision to go with a short with the intention of leveraging that to yeah. get the bigger budget to make the feature. Right. So it's kind of like that you're spending time. Yeah. So how, can you, can you talk about that process and all yeah. the things that went through your mind and it's difficult, right? I think, um, it starts with, especially when it's your own independent film, the philosophy I think should be only work on something that you have to do. And that starts the decision making process. So we could take that 200 grand and say, you can make a feature easily here for 200,000. I mean, people do it for a lot less than that. Yeah. So it's a, he a heck of a budget. Or maybe you could do two, you know? So it's like, what are you doing then? Like, what's the purpose? And I think for one, this is a true story. It's based on a true story. It's an incredibly gripping story, right? Um it's international, so it also gave that international film experience of like what it's like to make a film between two countries, international countries, which I think it's a good, that's a great education right there. So this is all educational as well at the same time. You know, you're always discovering something and, and, and to be able to do this overseas, it's true to the story because it's in England, you know, where it all happened. Um, which adds, you know, uh, authenticity to it. 
So all of these things come into play, and then you figure out, can you really get there? So I'm not shy to say um, I did things like I had equity in the orange. Do you remember the orange Jeep? Yes, yeah. the orange Jeep was a lovely Jeep. Right, so you know that sort of had to go by the wayside in order to you know to move forward. There were things like that. Okay, that um, you know that you apply savings, you know, and then that is a a true investment in your belief, right? And so I think it's the best possible product, the best story. Um, above all else that, that that I could have made. But yeah, it goes towards now so this has to be great and then you've got this it basically it stops at at the riots. The riots would be a massive budget. You've got cars yeah. on fire and stuff like this. But um so that it still be will very a very quality piece that will accentuate what the feature film could be. Yeah. And it all stems from I guess, like you said, it feels like it's from two places. It's one is the creator, the creative, the director, and the writer, and wanting to see the story come to life done right. And then there's Paul, the director, who wants to elevate his career to be known for not... I'll just say it for the sake of you didn't go this way, barfing up the low budget, <laughs> the low budget feature, and you're like, no, I'm I'm, yeah, I'm right, somebody who's right. capable of I can direct a multi million dollar project, yeah. and you will see that shortly, and that's what I'm building up toward is is the 200k is nothing in comparison to yeah. the five million dollar feature yeah. or whatever. And you show the studios as well a lot. You, you know, it's um, you you you're giving them within this film a lot of things to look at but they won't even start looking if it doesn't have a certain level of quality right so yeah yeah okay <clears throat> and so like you said you're still in post still in post you wrapped principal photography we had pickups in England in uh -huh. December which was crazy because that was like the biggest snow day in England of course, of course, <laughs> of course it was. It was. <laughs> it was literally. Like, I mean, it held off for us just long enough to shoot, but then came down like crazy. But yeah, so print that finished in December. Okay, I guess as a as a little reflective exercise, being that we're talking about growing and learning, what was the what was the? You mentioned patience as kind of like a general thing, but from this project specifically, do you recall? <laughs> do you recall um, <laughs> something you learned along yeah. the way? Um, I love, so Gavin Murray, you know Gavin. Uh, he was the director of photography. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think building relationships is incredibly important. I'm, I'm definitely somebody that wants to find people to grow with, and Gavin's definitely one of those people. And he wasn't, he was not happy with the results. We had an evening, a night scene um, outside. Um which the results of lighting it weren't, um, weren't something that sat well with Gavin, right? And so we had some choices. We knew that we were going to have to do some pickups. And um, I wanted to give Gavin the opportunity to redo that. So, um, and I, I, for me, it was also a good choice because it's an era piece. And we had, on this location, there were like vehicles way out in the distance in the background, but they were modern day. We were going to have to do some serious post on that. And so it was good to learn, to, to be true and integral to building those. If you say you're going to build relationships with people, respect them and, and, and give them the opportunity to, to grow with you. So if Gavin comes and says, I wish that we could redo this. So we redid that. And it helped us both. It helped the film. It, it, it's, a, it's definitely better location that we got because we're able to actually get... We've, we filmed at a location which is part of the original story in Luton Town, which is unreal. So it ended up definitely working out for the best. What we got, though, there in... Um, we also did a pickup for the chase scene... And so we've got footage now that was in bright sunlight in the summer and kind of foggy 
um, daytime in England with frost on the ground. So we've got to figure out how to marry that together. So um, that's one of the things I, I, I learned that I, we had a track um, that we did the chase scene with. I wish that I, I found out later that you could just hire an airport for less. And it would be better because they have roads inside the airport and you can, you know, these airports that aren't used. That's the thing I learned is like, you know, to be able to expand the mine more to, to possible location options. Um, the track was tricky for us because we had to wait for vehicles that were being tested by automotive companies that were top secret and get in the loop with them as well. So there was like things like that. But yeah, um, nothing that's, that's drastic that will affect oh. the film. Yeah, so as far as the, the first one that you talked about with uh, Gavin not being happy with the night exterior yeah. shoot, I guess for people that are less familiar, when it's nighttime, I don't know if, I, I my gut says it's probably a lighting thing too, yeah. like yeah. it takes a lot of lights to properly, air, air quotes, properly make something look good at night. It's just yeah. it's just a lot of setup. It and we had on, it. Yeah. We had all of the equipment for sure. It's just it was tricky. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's tricky. You're under the gun, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. It's like we gotta get this done quick. Right. And then you're Yeah, and it's like, all right, well, we set it up, we got it, we, we got it, but now that we know what we got, I know I can do a better job <laughs> with you know, I so I did it I guess my question is like did him pointing it out sharpen your eye at all with like did you see it too after or were you thinking it and he just said the words or i mean i agree i knew on the day because there was like um we had a situation where we're trying to keep the actors in a certain line you know and it's a very emotional scene so you you are torn between letting them be emotional because the moment you start to like Especially when it's this is a a, uh, a relationship moment. It's the probably the peak interaction in in the film between people um, where they're both crying. You know, it's like how many times do you want to step in and corral them into a position and lose that intensity for the emotion over other things? Like so, there was all of these. Um, constraints happening at once yeah and so they would drift off and like you would see the edge of lighting coming into play by the tree and like it it was just like um so no we 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 knew kind of what we were getting um we were hoping that once we review footage it would it would um there'd be enough to make it okay but just um, we just made that choice together. Okay. As a as a team with the DP, the DP obviously for the director is the partner in crime. Yeah, because I know whenever whenever somebody speaks up about them not being happy enough, it is nice to trust your team and be like, "Thank yeah. you for saying that." Yeah. And then it does help me bring that more to mind too. It's like, oh, I should be like, now that I know that you're not happy with it, that kind of gets distilled in my brain of like, oh, I shouldn't be settling for that either. Like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. okay. It's a new tool. Yeah. In the toolbox, and those moments are nice. And I want Gavin to know. I want to work with Gavin a lot. Yeah. And I want us to grow together. So I want him to know that he, if he says something to me that's important to him, that it's not just my movie. It's our movie. It's it's everybody's movie that's a part of it. So I think I'm hoping that in in return he will that will mean something to him as we grow together. You know that he that that I respect. You know what he's saying. You know. Yeah. Okay, great. I want to switch topics here. But at the same time, is there anything you else to talk about? Am I missing anything on uh, Once Upon a Riot that you're... Because it's in posts. Yeah. You go through that and you've mentioned it's lined up for 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 the right yeah. people to be looking at it. but We're going to have premieres. And the, the good thing about the premieres is um, we're looking at... We're probably going to do that at the Regal in L.A., um, but we will have um, a good crowd there, including agents and managers and studio executives. Nice. So that's going to be a fun one to have. It's going to be packed. We're looking at at least 100 seats in that one. We can't go to Rally. Do you know Rally Studios? is so, They've um, 
because I love Rally Studios, right? But they're like um, tied to Netflix now for like ten years. You oh, can't go there. Oh, really? Yeah, I did love that that, uh -huh. that location. Interesting. Okay, so you have a there's, there's no date set yet. You just kind of have a venue in mind. Yeah, we had um, so Bailey's been gathering. This is another good thing. Like in the process of looking into what you're going to do with a film, she's been gathering information about what the costs are for every single um, screening option in the area. So now we have a matrix. This is another part of the running the studio thing, right? You yeah. want to like doc it. So we've got a documentation of how many hours, what does it cost. Um, so now we've got a good idea of where we can screen films, you know, given the, the pluses and minuses. Yeah, yeah. This one's going to give us director chairs and microphones, and we can have a Q and A. And, there it is, right? You know, moderator to handle nice stuff, party all that words, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, great. That's good. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's good for that one. That's exciting. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Um, I do want to ride the wave of Dream Motion Studios here, and here I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, the excite, the exciting upcoming, <laughs> geez, uh, the exciting upcoming uh, projects in the work specifically, working with your daughter. Yeah, it's amazing. London. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Is there? Do you want to share? Because I know you two are co-directing. Yeah. Is the is the so, cause what excites you the most about it? Let's start with that. I'm through. So you having children, right? So we have two daughters, um, London, who's nine, and Haley, who's five. And you never know what they're gonna. Be. You don't know what they're gonna be passionate about. You just try to um, um, present them with a variety of opportunities, as many as you can, to so, to help them find their own path or like i think human beings have a blueprint we, we've got certain things in place already and then there's uh whatever paths you, you uh, nature get on, right? nurture all that stuff yeah, yeah right and so to, to let us so we presented like uh, london with soccer and gymnastics and theater and everything that she could look into anyway um, she came to London to be on set and she was, she's enamored with actors. She loves hanging out with the actors. She's, I think she's very mature for her age. She likes to hang out with the older people, the older crowd. She wants to hear what the actors have to say and the crew and be part of the mix. And she spent without getting bored, just time behind the monitors, uh, talking to the script supervisor over oh, there. Nice, right. Nice. Um, a lot, um, which was fabulous. And it's clear that she has, which makes you smile, of course, this book. And she loves it. And so, again, she said that she was going to write a script. I'm like, and of course, I'm okay. And I'm a little bit, this is bad, but I'm like, okay, you're nine, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you'll you do it when you do it. But she sat down one day in the studio and wrote the whole thing in one day. This, like, 10-page wow. story. Yeah. Right? And what my part was, was like she didn't know how to use Final Draft, but I loaded it on there. And of course, then, because I've been using it for years, right? I had the first version, I was close to the first version, Final Draft 4 or 3, I think it was. But um, so, and then I'm like, okay, I do have to teach her. So I spent like maybe an hour and a half telling her how to set up that this is where you set up a scene, this is what an action is, this is what. And then she just did the whole thing. Nice, and I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah, and I'd pro so I'd promised. I said, if you before this happened, if you write a script, we will make it properly and professionally, and give you all the resources for you to do it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's a good story. She did. She did a great job, man. It's a great story. And then how you will make it with the right resource? You'll 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 make it a a real thing for her. And you'll follow yeah. through and make the thing. And we then, have um, Evan. You know Evan, the Widen Keller. Maybe I probably do. do he, so he's uh, the DP. He was on our reality pilot. Oh, okay, we did. Okay. Um, we have Marianne to signed up to be first AD. Nice. I love her. She's and London wanted her too because, again, I want. I want to to. I've been always 
adamant about supporting women in the industry again not just for my own reasons and my mom's my hero she had her own business and she's been a strong mother and a uh, f uh, my hero in my life and I want to show the girls they can do anything they want to do and so having her surrounded by these mentors including Ella and Maya, who will be on set as well which is great um Bailey as well um that she can go forward with professional people to help her execute. Yes, it's her first thing, and I'm going to help her along in, in the directing, but she's acting in it, and she's cast it. So we did auditions in L.A. That was like last weekend. Yeah, or last right? weekend. And she, the people, the two people that she picked, the kids that she picked, we all, but she picked them, but we all agreed with her. So she's got an eye. She's got a feel for this, and so we're now supporting it the right way. The biggest hurdle was shooting, was getting um, the elementary school. So we're shooting in Seal Beach again. Yeah. I hadn't, they've got a system in place and they've been amazing. The principal has been spectacular, Wendy Wood. Um, it's, the, the system is geared for people wanting to teach at the school, to hire the school to teach. So it's got incredible re insurance requirements. So we had to navigate that. <laughs> it was going to be three and a half thousand dollars for one day of insurance, Ooh. right? So we had to figure that out. So there have been some um, learning <laughs> educational sure, opportunities sure. here, but we also got um, we've got the support of the Seal Beach. There's a, sh a tea shop in Seal Beach that's letting us shoot there, and um, yeah, we've got it all pretty much worked out. We're still looking to make sure that we have a script supervisor on board. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and. Um, yeah, because it, it sounds very exciting. It is. It's and nice it, to be able to support. It, it, yeah, it sounds amazing, and I'm 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 wondering what is most ex what excites her the most. Like, where is she? Because <laughs> there's if she's acting in it, yeah, and she's directing in it. That it's hard to wear both the hats. We have that figured out. Okay, so I'm curious to hear. So when she's acting, I'll direct. And then when she's not, when it's other people, we'll be side by side and she'll lead the way. That's very cool. And yeah. So it's going to, it's, uh, and she's first, first time on IMDb now. So she's got an IMDb page. Nice. Just, this is all crazy to me, but I just want to support her. She clearly has a passion for this and I'm all, I'm delighted to support her. Obviously it costs money. Um, but people do want to see it. So people at the studio, they 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 absolutely want to see it because they're impressed sure, with it. Sure, sure. And even if they don't, like it's still no. it's, a, it's that's it's, right. It's a it's a memory that's gonna exactly uh, yeah right. yeah that's investing in our kids. Right. That's not that right. I don't have kids, but <laughs> but you get it. It's like anybody that you no, want. It to sounds support. lovely. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Okay, there's that. Yeah. I guess I guess I'm curious as to the story as well. I did have a chance to, I, I skimmed I skimmed through most of it. Oh, good, good. And I got a, like a the synopsis and all that. Yeah. But how did you feel about the story that she came up with, and <laughs> how was that for you? Right. So this is great. This is a really good question because we all reached somewhere for our stories, and I like. I don't know how she came up with so it's a story about um three friends they get an assignment um at school and they agree to work on it together and um meet in the middle of the week to to do this group assignment and two of them show up and one of them is not there and so the the, the two girls that are there they're frustrated and they say they want to take a break and go get some ice cream and they go down to the shop and then um they see the third, the missing girl there with um, one of the, the two girls that, uh, that had been doing the assignment, their brother. And of course, that's um, frustrating, um, the sister. But it turns out that um, that the, the young man, the brother, who's a year older, is seeking advice from the third friend in order to tell his sister how, that that he knows their parents are getting divorced. So um, she's reached for that story from somewhere. And, you know, obviously, you know, um, 
her mother and I are divorced. We're amicable and it's all great. But uh, you wonder if that story is coming from a place where she's wanting to express or release or, but either way, I guess it doesn't matter. It's a good story. And, um, yeah, we're doing it for her. Yeah. I, I will ask her one day. Yeah, because I know I read the script or I read the synopsis and I'm like, all right, it sounds like a nine-year-old script. Yeah, and these friends hanging out doing projects. Yeah, it, right. it took a heavy turn at the end. I'm right. Like, this is this is a deep story here. Whoa. <laughs> it's getting real. Right, right. So that was kind of nice. Right. And, and yeah. <laughs> I was impressed, again, with the pace and the... You know, in a in a two day shoot, I was impressed with the pace and the consistency, and yeah, it was, yeah, it is what it is, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, I do. So that's next weekend. It's next weekend. Very exciting. To, I hope to be there. Um. <laughs> 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 so we do too. <laughs> I just want to ask about, I don't feel like we've talked about this before. We talked a little bit about <laughs> your, your sigh. You look so worried about my question. No, not at all. I'm an open book. <laughs> um, you brought up earlier the clips that we watched from Once Upon a Riot. Like we talked about there was a social last, last minute social gathering. And I wanted to kind of get your uh, what? What do we call it? like? I don't know, but like not like value system or like how do you like you're so great about bringing people together, oh, and good. then not on top on top of that you are like <laughs> highlight like you you're highlighting people. You you did the whole thing before we watched the clip. You like you went person to person and talked about how amazing they were in front yeah. of everybody else yeah i know you know it's just heartwarming and i don't want the spotlight at all here and i'm like take it off me no <laughs> but right, that's kind of right. why you're doing it too is yeah yeah uh, so i'm kind of yeah. curious as to like where that comes from or how oh man because it feels very intentional like it is yeah you make me cry <laughs> actually <laughs> what the heck <laughs> um God, man, what are you doing? Why is this happening to me? Um, I think human relations, uh, like as I've progressed through life, human relationships and our lives, they're, 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 in, they're really important. And, you know, we have, we have one journey on this earth. And I want, this is all, it's always integral, always genuine. And I want to, to make sure people know how wonderful they are or like truthfully you know and just to i think um illustrating that in front of others even though it may be embarrassing for the moment for the people that might be receiving it it's important to me to 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 show that i'm i want to acknowledge it and share it with other people like like um our relationship if we were to use that as an example to highlight that i do appreciate you and for these reasons. And I think sharing it with others and highlighting that to others just continues that momentum of appreciation. Like, and then it's like an authentic way of doing it. It's like, hey, I'm, this isn't just something I'm saying on myself, by myself or to just Eddie, but hey, by the way, guys, like this is how I feel about this person, I think is, is important to illustrate. Because we don't know when we're, I know this is a bit morbid, but we don't know when we're gone. Right, so and I've, I know people that, that have passed, you know, recently, and they they, they only had so many years. I want to make sure that at the end of the day, these people know that they're appreciated and how wonderful they are, as humans as well as creatives, you know, and hopefully that's that that the after my days are passed that they'll remember that, you know, that 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 there was an appreciation for them. And I hope that I know that people are dealing with, you never know what somebody's thinking about. I'm like, like the, the, the statement, always be kind because you don't know what's going on in, in somebody's life, right? Even if they're like angry or frustrated, it could be for another reason. So to lift people constantly, not fake, by, by delivering substance, 
I think is important in order to, to keep people ab- elevated into the happiness of their lives. You know, that's, that's what I want to do. No, <laughs> it's know. lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> yeah, because it feels genuine and it feels authentic to me. And I'm just like, I don't know how he does it. Cause it yeah, it's true. Yeah. But I also cut ties very quickly with, um, with individuals that are devious or deceptive um and i tell i i I tell my my children do the same thing it's like if if you are experiencing relationships of any kind that um are not genuine or negative or bring you down then don't waste your time with those it's just not worth it (sighs) yeah boundaries Mm. yeah yeah sounds great because I know I, I I could see somebody going about it the wrong way. Like, we could feel when somebody is... Because I was around this kind of person recently on a different set. but uh, Where they're saying nice things about other people in front of other people. Yeah. But you're like, they're trying to earn points. Right. Be like, oh, look at me being nice to everybody. Right. Do you like me now? Right. And you can you can tell pretty easily that person uh, yeah so so, yeah yeah, the the genuine way right yeah the way that you do it though is yeah i'm glad that you're that you're going above and you're yeah thanks man demonstrating this for for us that hope to do more of that because you can support it with your actions too right it's like when you say something like um like when we work together like um when we work together on that corporate job Mm -hmm. it's like like reaching out and saying hey can you be part of this is because i really believe and it wasn't script supervision that was just to produce on the day this corporate content but i'm like we work well together so let's team up and just like i know no matter what we're doing together or what how the uh, distribution of work is on that day it will be fine because we already have this repertoire this like you know this bridge and this bond Mm -hmm. that we will get the day done and it will be a fun process and we will deliver this content right yeah. we'll do a good job and we yeah. just know how to work together and it's, it's, yeah so that's everybody so everyone we're talking about that like it's just like and then oh by the way i will call you up and we'll bring you in as soon as we can it's the same just when the opportunity is there to do it and that that's what's happening soon with this cast and crew yeah. pilot we're gonna do yeah Lovely. Well, I was happy to take it there. I'm glad that it got what time. Really? What, what, what are we at? We got we got another half an hour if we wanted to. Really? It's eleven thirty. Wow, we're doing well then. We're doing good. Do um, you want to talk about? I think um, first of all, can I say Luton Town is playing tomorrow? Like this is a life thing now, right? <laughs> sure. You know, football is really important to me. Okay, go. I'm from so we the once upon a riot stems out of the town of Luton in England, mm-hmm. right? And. When I was growing up, I, I supported this football team. And when the Premiership came about, and I won't spend long on this because it's not about their industry. No, it's not really. When the Premiership League came about, it, Luton was relegated out of the top division. So they've never been in the Premiership. And tomorrow, they're in the playoffs. And if they win, they go into the Premiership. It's like a, it's a big deal. Um, so we'll be going to watch that at O'Malley's down in Seal Beach where we filmed. O'Malley's. <laughs> O'Malley's love... They're, yeah, great place. Okay, so uh, it's a big game. Big game. Part of the personal life. Yeah. It seems and, very restricted. And then, and then remind me, too, if if they win, they're now part of the Premiership? Is it? Yeah, the Premier League. And then... Which is unreal. Yeah, and then, and then they got to play with the big boys. Yeah, because they went as far as to being in outside of the Football League. So they were in what we call the Conference or the Village League. And that's like four tiers down. Right, so it goes: the conference, division two, division one, the championship, premiership. And they were all the way down here fighting for basically survival, and they've come up through the ranks to to get this far. It's amazing. Oh, wow, that's yeah. very impressive. Luton Town. Fingers crossed, the everybody. And by the time you're listening to this, we you will, you'll know what's up. But right now, Paul's excited. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it could be as I'm really disappointed and hiding away. Yeah, but yeah, we're really excited. No, very cool. But we have Luke's film too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that because I want to know. I feel okay. I don't want to. The term is lead the the interview interviewee. 
I don't want to lead. I don't want to lead the answer or whatever. But how did you? <laughs> how does that work? How did you pick Luke in his story? How did that whole? How did this whole thing come about? His new one. Yeah. So he wrote this, and I can't remember when he actually asked me. Actually, but he like he reached out, told me about it, and asked if I would direct it. I think. Uh, um, I think probably because of our experiences that we've had so far i think he has i don't want to speak for him but hopefully he has some kind of enough respect and he's not there's a oh, reason yeah it's like, <laughs> hey i like the way that you direct me right can you direct me again right. and we've been able to so i think um we've gone over the story together and um redefined the opening for it i think it's it's much better it's like his the film is about it's called d-list it's a young down and out actor trying to make his way you know but you could have heard that story many times in hollywood um but what we've done now is to bolster it um with i don't want to ruin the the essence of the film but luke went through to to follow his passion Mm -hmm. and he did this on from under the bridge he made incredible sacrifices that nobody knew about and one of them was that luke was literally sleeping in his car and I've never had to sleep in my car for a period of time. I don't even, I'm sure that that's not fun, you know, to live out of your car. But that's the sacrifice and passion to follow your dream and, you know, this industry. And um, that initially wasn't incorporated enough into his story. So we did a revision together um, within the last few days to ensure that that it goes deeper into what does it mean to follow this dream and how far are you willing to go? How, what sacrifices are you willing to make? And so it's going to be, uh, a, an, I think, a really great story. And I'm l- really looking forward to directing Luke. Okay, so he, he wrote, the sc- he wrote yeah. a script, came to you, and that just kind of got the ball rolling there. Yeah, okay. and he's been a bit nervous sense. about it now because now it's happening. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. I, I can see it, and I can hear it in his voice, and I can see it in his face. Because <laughs> it's it's vulnerable, especially if he's the writer, and he's I'm assuming he's acting in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah, sometimes when you're in that position, I'm a. S- he's he's is he producing alongside you, or is he like hey, no, can you he's produce and direct? So like he he was trying to. F- I you could tell he's trying to figure out what he should do because like we're helping him. Dream Motion Studios is going to produce it. We're helping him navigate this, but he, because he knew that he was driving it and he needed to at least raise some funds for it, even though a lot of us are helping out for for little or no cost. Um, he needed to find this place. How do I, I'm like? We're just like, don't worry about. We'll produce it. We'll get the crew in place. We will get um, aspects of it that you don't need to worry about. You worry about your character. Um, making sure you're comfortable with the vision of the script and we will take care of everything else to make sure that you don't have to because he's still working a day job and everything it's like we've got people in place that know what to do and uh, you know CJ CJ's come on board as well um, to help again um, as a favor and so there are people in place that are experienced that, that can help navigate so he doesn't have to get overwhelmed with anxiety about everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it c- You're a writer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I think so. You know, yeah, but you're not an actor. Not yet. No, you know, I, and I started off, that's performing arts. I was acting, which is funny. I, yeah, I, I, want to trust i know good actors when i see him i'm don't yeah probably want to venture there <laughs> sure but i guess i you could put yourself in the shoes right I'm, I'm, i guess that's what i'm doing right now it's like uh you writing something yeah and then being the lead actor in it yeah and then right. handing off the director to somebody else right that'd be really hard to do it's like but well, no this is not this is not how the story like no 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 this is yeah like uh could the, the, my 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 acting partner is not doing anything that I well, that I want them to do. Can you please lead them in the right direction? Right, right. It's this is it's interesting, right? I agree with you. It's tough, but um, no, it's cool. And this will be this is interesting because I didn't know. 
I'm learning now. This is what I was learning. I didn't know how I would be able to direct somebody else's work, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is that. Of, but now I'm finding it's not so difficult, especially if the writer wants to work with the director to um, bolster or elevate the overall story, which Luke has. Luke, Luke has not been afraid, knowing, I think, that because I have write, pro like proven writing experience, let's face it, like to allow me to make those, what we'll call, I guess, a shooting script. So we're taking his concept script or his initial script, his first draft, and then um, revising that to increase the, the overall product quality, you know, the, the product value. And that's what we do. And we've done that together. And where I've pushed something back to him, a revision, he has been absolutely appreciative of that, and that together we are, are yeah. growing that that quality. Yeah, it sounds like a a trusting, collaborative effort. Right. And I'm learning. So I'm learning now. It's like, wow, this can. I'm like, I would have always been nervous if I didn't. If it wasn't my vision and my writing, and my story, would I be okay? And I'm discovering now. Yes, yeah. this is the opportunity to do that. Because there's parts of it that almost make it easier too. You're like, there's less attachment. And you're, just, I'm just trying to execute a story here. It's not even right. Yeah, but that's nice. But I still think you have to. You with the. I think we had to do this back and forth to get to something that I was going to be, one hundred percent. Yeah. Excited and on oh, board sure. to do. For right? sure. For sure. That's step one is, hey, Paul, can you direct this? It's yeah. like, all right, let me read the script. Right. I'd be happy to if we work it. I yeah. need to get it to a place that excites me too. Right. And, and then if you... And I'm there. And then <laughs> if you send stuff back toward my way that just drains all my fun, then I'm like, well, I don't really want to... Yeah, you have to... Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a balance. Yeah. It's an absolute balance. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure how it came about. I was kind of imagining... Because I was thinking back to like... My Reno days, yeah. My Reno days of of like the Reno Film Collective, where we had our we had our community film group, and I was like the the head guy, being like, "Oh, wait, do you have a script? Hey, Luke, you you have a script? Let's make it. Let's, yeah, let's, we'll put this all together. We'll make yeah. your thing." <laughs> I felt like I felt like kind of one of those is just, uh, yeah, supporting uh, another creative who we've right. collaborated with before, and right. yeah, it's nice. And it's the same with the, with the reality show. Um, to get approached to direct that, it seems like, and I know they're really, really happy with, with that whole production, that these are opportunities to help other people as well, right? Because I think you, you, you are establishing the fact that you are something, but then also to give back and make sure that they have a quality result as well is, is great. It's like validation for what you're doing, you know, it's cool. Yeah. That okay. was fun. That was a fun. That was different as well. Reality, like because it's like you have two cameras at once, and you can only capture. It's not like you can do several takes of animals yeah, doing it's, things, it's right? Just so just the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never done that. It scares me, but that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Um, okay, I do want to jump to. I don't know. This is a hard trend. This I didn't segue this very. Can we talk <laughs> about your shirt? Your shirt says yeah. the writers got paid and lived happily ever after. The end. Yeah. So we did allude to right now. There's the writer strike. Yeah. I don't know if you have any opinions or or what's. I know. I know a lot of out out outside industry folk. Yeah. They don't. A lot of people don't really know what's right. going on. Right. Just that, like, because I get asked all the time. Family will reach out, like, "Hey, how's the writer strike affecting yeah. you?" And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to have to explain it all. I'll Paul explain it all. <laughs> I think. Um, I think. Get, coming back to Gavin as well. Gavin's been out there on the lines um, supporting, um, and he's a cinematographer, right? So I think it's about recognizing now the community of creatives, and it does go really deep, obviously. I think the AI conversation is a big part of it. So let me start with, I guess, that part. Sure. There's a question about if AI can... can um, can be utilized for screenwriting, right? And that's probably coming into play with all this. It is coming into play with all this. Um, and I say this, every creative story that's written 
comes from the human core one way or another, right? There is, there are true stories which can't be fabricated or conceived by AI. They have happened and somebody needs to put that on paper, that true story, and turn it into a film, right? AI can't possibly do that accurately because they aren't living living the experience. So there's that element. Obviously, reality TV isn't something that AI can put together because that's reality. But even the narrative stories that are conceived that are fictional and not based on a true story or what have you, they're still being generated from human experience. Like the stories that we write come from things that, that some way or somehow our own imagination, our own experiences, they, they are contributing to that storytelling. So yeah, you can get a cookie cutter, artificial intelligence story and it may be formatted perfectly and seemingly well dialogued, and but it still doesn't come from the center of human nature, which is essential to to creating unique and individual stories, right? From f because because of what we have inside of us and what we grow and build, you know. So there's that topic of conversation now, which I think is delaying this overall. Well, it's you know extending the journey of the strike. Yeah, and I guess I guess just to expand on that a little bit, my understanding because I've seen the the two columns of the ask, and then the mm, right, and then the, <laughs> right. then what the studios right. came back with, and for right. that one specifically, they <laughs> their what's it called? Not the proposal, the the um, when you put out an offer and they send back their not the rebuttal, but. You know, the word. Yeah. there's a word for right, that. Right, right, right. But go on. But their, their, uh, what they sent back was, oh, we're open to a once a year uh, meeting about technology. Right. <laughs> was there? Right. Was there? Like, we'll do that. Because I know that AI can be used in many ways. Like, yeah. That's why it's so anti writer is you could, we could hire you as our studio to write an initial draft, like a comedy, let's say. Yeah, yeah. And then. It's like, well, this one's not really making it. There's some jokes that aren't literally landing. Let's just type in a chat GPT right. joke about chainsaws in the form, in the, in right, the voice. Right. Of, and right. It'll punch out variations <laughs> of that, too. And you're like, yeah, just throw that in the script. And that's kind of where the, like, even just small stuff like that could get get tossed away to AI if we're not. Um, yeah. You're taking, yeah, it's just jobs, right? It's, um yeah. And plus, humor is so specific too, and all that, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, all right. AI is one thing, right? Um, yeah. I mean, again, obviously, the the um, distribution of wealth and profit sharing. That's the big um, one, right? And um, you know, making um, these important people in the industry creative people that um, not every it's not. Everybody and anybody can do these things. Is making sure they're appreciated because at the end of the day, um, the whole you know the whole world enjoys storytelling and entertainment through visual form. And to then just say that that's something that can that's that that, that can be um, disrespected or not appreciated by not paying accordingly or having a a Progressional um, acknowledgement through consistent um, raises and so on is to say it's something that needs to be um, attended to for sure, and that's so that's that's where we're at. But it seems like there's there's going to be it's going to be a while. My fear is that you know when you have a strike. So we'll, this is we'll try and nutshell this. When you have a strike, you're not paying people. Right. So right now, money is not going out, and it, this is this is <laughs> what I don't necessarily like about it. But so there's a duration of time. So let's say that um, a, a company doesn't pay staff for six months. They then have in the bank a certain amount of funds that they have not paid. So let's say a company pays out to their staff the course of a year ten million, right? And they don't pay that out for six months. 
So now, the longer the strike goes on for, and this is just a, a, an, a, an opinion, there's an accumulation of funds in the bank, right, that at the end of the term, when they decide that, that they've accumulated enough non-spent non cash, that now they can take that and give those funds to what the ask is, right? Mm. So if you've got five million in the bank now because you didn't pay people, now you can say, oh yeah, we're ready to give you your one, two percent adjustment, right? So, and that's how I feel like sometimes strikes go, that they're like, there's like there's, there's, there's the savings going on and then you take that savings and then you give the strikers what they want. It would just that's be what nice. You're hoping. I mean, yeah, I guess that I can. But see at that time, they sure. sacrifice. They they don't get to recoup. Sometimes they do, but that pay that has yeah. um, that has been uh, um, not taken. You know, recouping it through the strike period is like the question. Yeah, because I know that the ideal situation is that they are losing money. I guess it's tougher for like streaming services like Netflix. Because their service is still up and they're still putting new content up that they've had. Right. But like ABC or something that has a general schedule to put up for people. Like their shows are all non-scripted right now. Yeah. The schedule is like, oh, you're watching Jeopardy and reruns of this. Yeah. Yeah. All the ratings go down and that means the commercials aren't paying and they're losing money in that realm. For things that need to be written on the fly or like you're talking about the late show. Late night shows. Jimmy Fallon, for example. Yeah. Um, SNL, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Um, but okay, yeah. But That's all, interesting yeah. take, though. It's like, yeah, we just need to hold you off enough and then we can afford your demands. Right. Right. Because, uh, you know, and they will when, when they feel like now they're needing, you know, um, to get people back in, in creative roles, then it would just be nice to see um, all of that get resolved when they're asking for it out of the money that's available through profit system at that point in time. So the right thing to do would be to, you get through the strike, let's say, because th- some people are saying like November, October, November time, right? So it would have been like six months, right? That you then attend to all of that pay that people missed out on back to the point of the strike, but that won't happen. So it's a strategy, right? At the yeah, end of the they, day, they could they strategy. could ask, but yeah, yeah, but it's not it's not in there now. So then, like, then the revolutions continue now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Okay, so there's that. I don't know the whole the whole thing too is the cause you when you're writing your show. I know that you were adamant about like you're the one writer. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 In, yeah. In the room, you don't you're not bringing in a staff to write with you on particular yes particular projects yeah yeah and that would that that's not something i'm set to it just happens to be on this particular yeah 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 so it's so complicated yeah yeah um so i know that a big part of it is uh the writers are negotiating for that consistent uh inside yeah, just the the future of the industry is kind of the whole yeah. thing. Is like we need yeah. we need to keep building up the new writers and get the, getting them on set experience and making sure they're paid to be on set after they're done writing. Is they need to be a part of the production process because writing happens yeah, on yeah, the yeah. things change and writing happens on the fly all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can choose not to be part of that process as well. It's like it's up to you know. Yeah, you can either way, but right. Yeah, yeah. I would. That's yeah. Writing was a writer strike. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, like in this situation, we've got plenty of other things to do right now, you know, I mean, for us, but there are a lot of people, obviously, that that's their livelihood and, yeah, you know, the, the way that they need, they need to live to pull in those funds. Yep. And then on top of that, I guess, just to, just to say for the people at home too, is the, the current guild that's also now negotiating is the director's guild right. and then SAG is also up after them right? And we could see a situation of multiple unions on strike at once which I, I'd be curious to see that but we'll see if it gets to that yeah like you can imagine if um, all th- like obviously there's the three principles acting writing directing yeah we're just missing IATSE but maybe one day <laughs> <laughs> nice but yeah, writers, actors, and directors. Yeah. You, yeah, what do you have left? Um, <laughs> the producers are 
Yeah, all right. And it's the effect on people that are continuing to do it as well. So what's so like um I've had conversations with parenting London, um again with my rock Courtney and um and London's mother as well. Um like if she wants to like with this every like people that are connected by a branch or whatever to this industry, um, that know that like as significant others, you know, and um the people we have relationships with, like already asking the question, um, is it something we want to encourage our kids to do? Because everyone's, you know, now scared by the AI factor and is it going to be something that's worth pursuing? I mean, that's having a cause and effect on then the young creatives, you know? And so I have the conversation um, with um, London's mother about, you know, her dream and pursuit of this incredible gift she has. Yeah, because it's already a volatile industry with, right. without all this. It's right. like, all right, it's not, is it getting any better? Right. <laughs> is it getting worse? Is it something that you really want to encourage your, your kids to do? And when that starts being asked, obviously, there's clearly a massive problem. And we have to, like, again, it, it comes back to, I think, to understanding that being creative, originally creative, is a human trait. It's a characteristic. So uh, we, I sincerely hope we're not going to try and abandon or dilute that through um, technology. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Well, it's, it's interesting, right? Because we had, do you remember, like, uh, what was it, like six months ago? All of a sudden, everybody was posting um, AI images of themselves. Yeah, yeah. And that seemed to, like, last a couple of weeks. Yeah. I've got a director buddy that is using what is he using which one oh, i forget the name but he's using that software to uh develop his yeah. next project so he's coming up with all this like imagery or yeah the imagery yeah. um as like his um like the early pitch deck kind of stuff i think it's like the the cool sci-fi visuals and all this crazy stuff and then he posted about another ai like it was kind of weird it was showcasing the that was the the top screen was like Rocky going up the steps. Oh like yeah, like the actual yeah. Yeah. clip of the thing, and then underneath was a AI generated character being re like replacing Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, and it like the whole three hundred and sixty camera, the the three D model did everything that yeah. Sylvester Stallone did without. But it was still, I was just I'm like, oh no, this is scary. What, what are you doing? Right. Um, it's interesting, but yeah, for th for the general public, it feels like the image creation thing is that was a fad for yeah, a little bit. Right? But it seemed like it was a fad. I don't know. How, it's, it's getting good though. So the, I I mean I've been curious as about let's say like you need a movie poster. Okay. Yeah. Right. So here's this is when like so you because you, you have to be objective at why are people wanting and how are they wanting to apply AI in any particular situation so I'm like I, I tested like I want to be objective about certain things like okay so I have a feeling about AI in writing and I can understand how correctional or like um, I could see the application and I can see people using was it chat um, what is it chat GPT. yeah chat GBT for um, doing like synopsis work right and or pitch decks and to make sure the grammar like it reads right uh i can understand this some i mean people that are in our industry have said that they're using it right people that we know right yeah i've heard people trying it out and not getting good right yeah, but yeah right so trying so now i'm like okay where where is a genuine application that i might see value in it right and i'm like okay and I, I'm not saying that this is what I want to do, like, cause, because I like original human creation, right? But a movie poster, where if you were like to type type in the element to prompts, right, prompts into something and see what that comes up with, am I curious? Yeah. Have I seen somebody recently? Yes, a friend of mine wanting to do um, an album cover and put in some prompts for for um, a music um, release and see what the results were. And no. They don't work. It's terrible. Um, so who knows? But I have been curious about seeing what could be 
spit out, I guess, from from certain prompts in certain aspects. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, all right, I want a nine by. I don't know what the what the. I want a two thousand by three thousand pixel image of yeah, two twenty seven inch by two silhouetted inch. two silhouetted yeah, uh, right. young boys with right. a car and you know you can yeah in the style of and then see what happens a Wes Anderson film and right then, it's like all right this this is lovely thank yeah, you yeah so can I just move on but I I just again I don't think it's going to uh, be something yeah, I want to do yeah cool it's been good man all right. No, lovely, lovely. I feel like we're there. We're there. Thanks for thanks for having me out and being down to come back on the show. It's great. It's thanks been, for having me, buddy. I love this. Yeah, it's been a bit. I think, yeah, that's it. That's it, everybody. That's the show. We're just ending like that. Just I just realized I've spent the whole time looking this way. So all they've got, <laughs> I hope that I like took care of this ear, you know, and the side of my face. Profile. But so I haven't faced the camera once. There you so go. There's his face. Um, so for just to end off like we normally do, how do people keep in the loop with everything that you're working on? Oh yeah, right, cool. Um, so there is a Dream Motion Studios website with one M, although we did get the two M's now because so many people have spelled it with Dream Motion two M's. I don't know why, but that's it. Studios dot com, and um, that always has stuff that we're doing and. Instagram is Paul James Movies. Um, I don't think I'm delivering Facebook stuff anymore. I think that's no, I think that's good. Instagram and uh, and, and the, the website. website. There yeah, you that's go. That's good. That's good. Great. All right. Perfect. Well, that's the show, everybody. Thanks again, sir. Thank and, you. And uh, another time. All right. Bye, everybody. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>